Welcome everyone. Uh, thanks for coming along after lunch. I hope you've got your coffees and can stay awake. Hopefully I'll keep it fairly interesting for you. Um, as Paul said, I, I really want to talk about this um, merge of certain categories in pre procurement, particularly in IT and marketing, as we enter an increasingly digital world. Uh, hopefully it will provide a bit of a build on what Christian said in the trade shift session on the future of business earlier today, if you attended that one. Um, about me, uh, as Paul said, uh, Paul Harlingson, Group Procurement Director for TUI Group, reporting directly into the Executive Board. I have done since the merger of TUI AG and TUI Travel PLC two years ago. Um, I have the dubious honour of being the only remaining UK Group Director since the merger. Everybody else has been kicked out of the business or has left. Uh, I don't know why I'm still here, really. Um, fantastic business to work for, uh, very, very complex. Um, but is TUI as a group is struggling with the shift to being a digital online business, albeit supported by a lot of assets, as you'll see. And I'll take you through that. Um, what else about me? I also race motorbikes. That's my passion. Uh, it takes a lot of money. I uh, have the honour this year of being the first loser in my national championship, so I came second, unfortunately. Uh, but still very happy with that. Um, my boss absolutely hates it because uh, he's just waiting for me to come in with a serious injury or not come in, as the case may be. Uh, setting some context on procurement, uh, you're all in the profession, a, a lot of you know this, but what we've seen as a p purchasing or procurement function is a lot of focus on different areas, whether it be a focus on transactional and operational costs, uh, whether it's been the focus in direct or MEP procurement, uh, particularly with the evolution of skills, specifically in automotive and engineering and manufacturing, where we've got some real best-in-class procurement functions. Uh, but we've also seen the rise in the indirect procurement function and the focus specifically on IT to start with, but then in later days, focusing on services, on marketing, and on areas like that. Now... When we think about IT and marketing procurement, uh, for me, or certainly when I started off my career, the focus on IT procurement was very much on TIN. Okay? We're buying desktops, servers, laptops, printers, anything to go in the data centers, uh, moving in later days into the world of mobile phones and peripherals, uh, even things like Bluetooth headsets, USB sticks, voice over IP telephones. Hopefully you've all seen uh, teams focus on this in the past. Uh, but these days that takes up relatively little of an IT procurements function for me. And I would estimate with my team, they spend less than 5% of their time on buying IT hardware like that. Uh, same when it comes to software, traditionally a focus on desktop-based, on-premise software, or data center software, things like Microsoft Office, IBM and Oracle database licenses, SAP ERP systems and the like. Um, I would go as far to say that my team spend less than 10% of their time on that. In the marketing world, uh, particularly for TUI, um, we're very brochure dependent. If you've ever been in any of our shops, such as Thompson and First Choice in the UK, you'll walk in and you'll see racks and racks of brochures where people go in and they want to flick through nice glossy pictures of holidays and decide where they want to go. We spend an absolute fortune on that. Um, it's produced on the highest quality paper that we can get typically. Uh, it's using very high production standards in terms of ink. And uh, a lot of it's wasted as well, because customers will come in, they'll take about six brochures, take them home, flick through them, and then throw them in the bin, or these days they're recycling. Uh, we also have a penchant, particularly in our Tui Russia business, for putting lots of women in weird outfits on the, uh, <laughs> on the brochures, and also in our in-flight magazines of promoting things like perfumes and jewellery, which often involve scantily clad models. Uh, I don't get involved in that selection, unfortunately. Um, but associated with that is a lot of warehousing and distribution costs. Um, we fight for printer resource quite often because we're wanting to produce brochures in the run-up to Christmas when traditional retailers might have been looking to produce their brochures as well. And that causes quite a lot of problems. 
luckily that sort of business is dying down for us again um i would say my marketing marketing procurement team spend less than 15 percent of their time on that and then we, when we move into the more general areas of marketing things like out of home advertising billboards trains buses airport lounges and so on um, this is the sort of thing that might have taken up a lot of a procurement team's time maybe 5, 10, 15 years ago. They would be focused on these offline categories. These days, maybe less than 20% of our work. So just going to TUI now, and uh, I don't assume that you know everything about uh, TUI, so just a, a few facts and figures. We serve 30 million customers globally in 31 source markets. What we mean by a source market is where somebody travels from. Turn over 20 billion euros a year, um, but only make about a billion euros a year in EBITDA. So quite a, a low profitability business for that amount of turnover. But incredibly asset heavy. We've got 15 cruise ships. On average, each cruise ship costs between 400 and 500 million euros a piece. We've got 140 medium and long haul aircraft and those aircraft could be costing anywhere from 20 million up to 100 million a piece. So that's a lot of assets to hold in your business, especially when you compare it with a truly digital company uh, such as Uber, Airbnb or some of the others that we've heard about today. We also have a large retail estate, so 1,800 travel agencies across Europe. We have a lot more than that that are in our uh, distribution network as well that sell our holidays. What does that mean in the digital context? Well, it means we need to communicate with those 30 million customers. We, as of last year, we had 41% of our sales online. So that's around about 8 billion euros a year that's solely dependent on those online sales platforms. We need to have things like satellite data and communications on board the cruise ships, because everybody wants internet these days, even if they're in the middle of the Mediterranean. And we need to support all the IT systems to allow our six airlines and our 140 aircraft to run. Uh, but we also need to provide things like onboard entertainment for our customers, onboard Wi-Fi, and all those other things that we come to expect now when we fly. That on top of the hygiene factors like actually serving and supporting our 77,000 employees across the globe. Now, we were actually quite slow to grasp the digital trend. Um, in a lot of our airlines in Europe, we were one of the last ones to actually offer things like online check-in or actually mobile apps for you to, to look at your flight ahead of your holiday or have your boarding pass on your iPhone. I'm glad to say that we're catching up on that and the board's starting to realise the importance of digital to our strategy, but we need to bring the rest of the company along for the ride and actually get them to understand that importance of digital. And I think it's there's a, there's a very interesting comparison when you look at purely digital travel companies, online travel aggregators, or like I say, the likes of Uber, or, uh, Airbnb, Expedia, TripAdvisor, and so on. Those companies do not have assets that they need to look after. They're entirely digital uh, companies that have no real concept of direct and indirect procurement. Everything is direct because it's about their digital product we have a lot more hygiene to, to look after. Uh, in terms of our customer, um, an interesting statistic, see, bring the statistics in here, Paul. Um, our customers do a lot of research online and we estimate make about 90% of their decision-making <laughs> process online and through talking to peers on social media and so on before they even interact with a single employee in TUI before they walk into a retail shop, before they call up to book their holiday. That's an incredible amount of the decision-making process that's completely out of your hands if you're not influence, influencing that digital channel and tracking your customers. We also have customers that will use multiple devices to actually research their holiday, as I'm sure all of you do. You might start on an iPhone, you might move to a tablet, you might finally book via a desktop or a laptop and you need to be able to track those customers across those channels. 
we also have the increasing need for the marketeers to be able to segment those groups of customers as well and understand exactly what those customers' needs are. And I'll, I'll come to that in a second. Now, when you think about the holiday journey, um, a customer could have a number of digital actions with a holiday company. It could be anything from actually phoning up or booking the holiday online to interacting with their friends to say, I'm going to Mauritius on, on Facebook, to using the hotel's Wi-Fi, speaking to the air airline staff on board the aircraft, um, visitors in a retail store, using a mobile app ahead of their holiday or even after holiday, all those things. These are all challenges for the marketing and the IT guys to actually make sure that they're interacting with those customers and tracking those customers at all those points. The reason I raise this is that it then means that all these things like the IT tin, the standard IT software, the offline marketing, they all become more of hygiene factors to the business in that they demand a lot less time of the IT and marketing functions uh, resources and they're much more focused on the online digital business and how they can best support that. And for IT and marketing, they're looking at search engine optimization. They're looking at how we're ranking um, online in the search engines. They're looking at pay-per-click AdWords, uh, looking at CRM systems, customer relationship management systems. And those systems are no longer just a simple database where you've got a list of all your customers, but they're central systems of record for actually monitoring all your customers' interactions with all your different distribution channels, all your agents in your business, and they're incredibly complex to install. Um, have things like multi-channel uh, digital campaign management, and then the analytics packages to actually understand how your customers are interacting with you. All those things are what I tend to term digital. And for me, it really depends on your organization as to whether it's IT or marketing that are actually leading that activity. Um, often, if you speak to them separately, they'll say they're both leading it. Um, also consider, I touched on this a moment ago, uh, the growth of mobile. Mobile usage or adoption is growing eight times faster than web adoption ever grew. That's an incredible rate of change. And that's, that's a, a global trend. If you look at certain countries, um, especially um, sort of India, Asia Pacific and so on, um, some of those countries have entirely bypassed the sort of desktop laptop stage and just gone direct to mobile. So there's a real paradigm shift in how people are actually <coughs> approaching their online sales or servicing of customers. Um, we also have the fact that, as I mentioned, a lot of us use more than one device to actually access the internet. Um, I think, statistic here, um, f more than 40% of all adults that are going online will start a, a process or a transaction on one device and finish it on another. In fact, the more devices people have, the more likely they are to use multiple devices to actually interact with you. And uh, I think in the UK, over 60% of people actually own more than one device, and that's just growing. Now, in terms of mobile strategy, well, what does that mean for IT and marketing? Well, I, I would argue that for IT and marketing, they need to consider mobile first, second, and third as part of their strategies, because the IT or marketing departments that focus on desktop first will really struggle. And quite honestly, that was something that TUI struggled with for quite a while. They were not only focused on desktop first in terms of their websites, uh, but actually had a brochure-led uh, strategy. So we designed our brochure content first. We then replicated it on a website that was desktop optimized, and then we thought about mobile. And that was, that was a real... Um, burden on the business that didn't work particularly well. But to get people to focus on this digital mobile first strategy is actually quite difficult, I would say. 
Um, it's also a particular challenge for the procurement function. Um, in the opening panel today, uh, you heard Christian speak about who wants to work with a cloud business that's more than six years old. Yeah. But as procurement people, we are trained and it's ingrained in us to look for financial stability, to look for track records in performance and successful implementations. In the mobile world, you're often working with startup companies that may have only existed for six months, maybe a year. How do you adapt your procurement approach to be successful in those arenas? How do you maintain agility to make sure that you can move to the latest and greatest mobile technology? That's all a challenge. Uh, the other thing is, you know, how do you make um, successful agreements with these smaller, evolving mobile companies that will benefit your business without giving a huge upfront commitment or without giving a long-term agreement that may not be beneficial to your business. They're all particular things that doesn't necessarily come easily to some buyers, I would argue. So all these things, the rise in digitization, the increase in mobile adoption, and this appearance of the digital world, I would say is creating conflicts between IT and marketing. Um, each function might be trying to create their own digital department. Uh, you might even have a CDO uh, being appointed in your organization, a chief digital officer. But I, I would say that out of all of you, if you have seen a CDO in your organization, they've probably all sat in different places. There's probably no consistency in where that CDO would be reporting to. Um, so, in my opinion, we, we do need a, a new, innov innovative and digital savvy approach to procurement. We need people that can actually understand the digital trends, uh, but can act in an entrepreneurial way, uh, in the way that they're actually dealing with some of these smaller companies, in the way that they're structuring and setting up some of the deals. That doesn't necessarily mean that we just need to import a load of graduates uh, and young people into the business. You need people that understand the digital world. And I would also say you need a mixture in your team. Yeah? There is still a space for people that understand hardcore IT procurement. There is still a space for people that un understand core marketing procurement. But I would argue that you need people in there that do understand the digital world and can adapt quickly to it and act in an agile manner to service the organization. The industry is starting to wake up to this. I would say that IT and marketing departments, CMOs and CIOs, are starting to wake up to this. But in my opinion, as CPOs, we need to react and we need to plan for this change. Because if we wait too long, we will become irrelevant to our customer. They will source the digital resources that they need to run their business, but we won't be ready with the skill set in our organizations to adequately serve that customer. So um, to summarize my ramblings, um, and hopefully ahead of time, Paul, um, as Christian put it uh, in the future of business session, um, in the future, indirect, direct, and services categories will all mix. Uh, and for me, in a lot of businesses, particularly where they're becoming more digital, that means that direct and indirect concepts of procurement are becoming redundant. If you don't think about it that way, then maybe think about it like this. Um, you could consider digital as being a new category of procurement. And I would argue in a digital business that digital is a direct category. You may be buying IT, which is tra traditionally indirect, but it has a direct effect on the business and in some cases is actually the product. We have to remember that our some of our traditional procurement approaches don't work. In the mobile world, you can't spend three to six months running a tender. You can't select only businesses that have existed for more than three to five years with massive financial sta stability and scores of FTSE 100 implementations. You need to react quicker than that and be agile. 
and we have to address this digital shift in procurement now in order to stay relevant to our customers and serve their best needs. That's it from me. Thank you very much. Um, any questions?